Though Jesus Christ was rejected by his countrymen, mocked by Roman soldiers, and finally killed on a cross, he was vindicated by his resurrection from the dead. This one historical event is at the heart of the Christian proclamation of the gospel. We are to proclaim the fact that Jesus Christ uh, came into the world uh, to save us from our sin. Christ is the answer to, to Adam and the fall. The Christian faith is a historical faith. Unlike many of the world's religions, Christianity is no mere philosophy. Rather, the Christian religion is firmly grounded in history. The only place that you can ever come to know God is in history. God does not reveal himself outside of space and time. When God reveals himself in history, he reveals himself both by the things he says and the things he does. The ancient Jews, for example, understood this. When they wanted to teach their children what God was like, they would take them out into the fields, for example, and, and point to the, to the little pillar of stones that was there as a reminder that, um, that God had done such and such a thing for us. That is, God is the one that you meet in space and time. God is the one who makes and keeps his promises. God is the one who delivers the, the captives out of Egypt. God is the one who delivers Israel across the Red Sea. God is the one who raises the dead. God is not a concept. God is, a, is, a, a, God is an actor in, in human history. If it's not historical, it seems to me it's not actually Christian. Um, when you look at the Apostles' Creed, everything the Creed says about God, the Father, and about God, the Son, it says on the basis of something that the Father and the Son have done. The Christian view of history is linear. There is a past, a present, and a future. History is progressing toward a certain end. But unlike the Marxist and secular humanist worldviews, Christianity acknowledges that God is the Lord of history. There are no impersonal forces guiding history. Evolution does not provide the guiding hand. The dialectic is not behind the ebb and flow of history. Rather, history will reach its goal because it is designed and guided by the God of history. But history does not repeat itself. It's not, that is, it's not cyclical. That is, we're not going to be here again. Um, you, go, you, you get one chance to go through a fallen world. That's all you get. Um, there are no do-overs in life. Um, and so the things that you say and do in this space-time continuum have eternal significance. They matter. Many humanists assert that the Bible cannot be trusted to tell the truth about what has happened or will happen in history. The Bible is, in fact, a reliable document. The New Testament was largely written either by eyewitnesses or by individuals who knew the eyewitnesses. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls confirmed the textual accuracy of the Old Testament. These scrolls reveal that even though the Bible had been copied and recopied for thousands of years, its integrity has been retained. Further, archaeology has consistently supported the records of historical events and geographical locations noted throughout the Bible. The way to start in understanding why we know the Bible is inerrant is to begin with the New Testament and not to assume it's inspired, but just simply take the New Testament as a collection of 27 documents about first century Christianity. By applying certain tests to those documents, we can discern that they are pretty reliable historically. Not an errant at this point, but just good history. Archaeological discoveries have verified this, the New Testament and so on. If we can show that the New Testament, especially the Gospels, are pretty good history, because they harmonize with what we know about the time and we know when they were written and that kind of thing, then we can ask, well, what did Jesus Christ teach? It appears that Jesus Christ taught that he was God, and we can present a case that he actually rose from the dead. If we can conclude that Jesus Christ was God, then we can conclude that he is not going to lie to us, and then we can ask, what was his view of the Bible? Well, it turns out that his view of the Bible was not that it was just a collection of historical documents, but that it was more than that. It was actually the inerrant word of God. While many of today's liberal scholars try to deny that Jesus ever existed, the non-biblical references to him provide ample reason to reject their denials. Bruce Metzger, a well-known New Testament scholar, writes that the early non-Christian testimonies concerning Jesus, though scanty, are sufficient to prove that he was a historical figure who lived in Palestine in the early years of the first century, 
that he gathered a group of followers about himself, and that he was condemned to death under Pontius Pilate. Today, no competent scholar denies the historicity of Jesus. Either human history is ordained by God and is directed by Him toward an ultimate goal, or human history began randomly and is simply a product of chance. The fact that Christianity is a worldview based in history is clearly seen throughout the scriptures. Although humanistic worldviews declare that we can save ourselves, the Christian worldview holds forth a living hope in the living Savior, Jesus Christ. God has revealed His plan for the human race by conquering sin and guaranteeing a triumphant end to human history.